Welcome to our guide to the Japan Rail Pass for first-time visitors to Japan. We're going to break down the basics and answer all the questions we received. The JR Pass is a cost-effective and convenient ticket that allows foreign visitors to take unlimited rides on JR transportation. This includes JR trains, some buses, and the Miyajima Ferry. In this video, we're talking about the JR Pass for whole Japan. In separate videos, we'll explain about regional passes. The basic, ordinary JR Pass covers riding in ordinary train cars, whereas the more expensive, green JR Pass covers riding in green cars or first-class cars. Basically, you get a bigger, more comfortable seat. You can purchase a JR Pass that is valid for 7, 14, or 21 consecutive days. Whichever day you activate your pass counts as day one, no matter what time you start using it. So for example, with a seven day pass, if you activate it on Monday, it will run for Monday through Sunday, ending Sunday at 11.59 p.m. The JR Pass offers unlimited rides on covered JR transportation during the valid period. Can you use it for a round trip? Yes. Can you use it for a journey that starts and ends in the same city? Yes. Can you use it for a journey that starts and ends in different cities? Yes. You can use it to go up, down, round and round, anywhere you choose. It's for unlimited rides. The biggest advantage of the JR Pass is that it includes most Shinkansen bullet trains, which can be pretty expensive if you're purchasing individual train tickets. Please note that the JR Pass currently excludes a couple of the Shinkansen trains, the Nozomi and the Mizuho. However, when the price of the JR Pass increases in October 2023, those trains will be included if you pay an additional fee. But not to worry, there are other Shinkansen trains that run on the same routes that are covered by the JR Pass, so you can still get everywhere you need to go. Do you need a JR Pass for your Japan trip? Is it worth it for you? Let's take a look at whether the JR Pass is worth it for some common Japan itineraries. Currently, an ordinary seven-day pass purchased through a travel agent before coming to Japan costs 29,650 yen. JR passes for children ages 6 to 11 cost half the price as adult passes. The cost of the JR pass for whole Japan will increase in October of 2023, and the new price for an ordinary 7-day pass will be 50,000 yen. If you'd like to pre-order your JR pass by September 29th, 2023 to lock in the current prices, we have a separate video explaining how you can do that. I will show two options of how you can calculate whether the JR Pass is financially worth it for your trip. First of all, let's look at going from Tokyo to Kyoto and then back to Tokyo again. Let's look at what it would cost you if you purchased those Shinkansen bullet train tickets separately instead of getting the pass. I use the Kluke app to check the prices of individual Shinkansen train tickets. Going from Tokyo to Kyoto costs 13,320 yen for an unreserved seat. It's a little bit more for a reserved seat. Then going back again from Kyoto to Tokyo also costs 13,320 yen for a total of 26,640 yen. If you bought just this round trip Shinkansen ticket, Tokyo to Kyoto, it would cost 3,010 yen less than purchasing a JR Pass. However, we still feel it's worth it to buy the JR Pass. Here's why. In addition to using the pass for those Shinkansen train rides, you can also use it to get from the airport into Tokyo and then to get around Tokyo on the local JR trains. It'll be pretty easy to make up that 3,000 yen difference. If you decide to add in a side trip such as Kyoto to Nara or Kyoto to Osaka, that will increase your savings. Plus the JR Pass includes getting reserved seats, which would cost a bit extra if you were buying the tickets individually. Now at the new price of the JR Pass of 50,000 yen, it wouldn't be so worth it for a simple trip going Tokyo to Kyoto and back to Tokyo again. It would save you more money just to buy individual train tickets. What about the itinerary Tokyo to Kyoto to Shinosaka Station and back to Tokyo again? For a more complicated itinerary, I like to use the JR Fare Calculator. So for example, if you were going Tokyo to Kyoto to Shinosaka Station and then back to Tokyo again, we can enter that into the fare calculator and see that the cost of buying individual reserved seat tickets would be 32,560 yen, which means that the JR Pass would save you 2,910 yen versus buying individual tickets. 
After that, the more you use your JR Pass for transportation within Tokyo and within Osaka or to and from the airport, the more you'll save. To really maximize use of the JR Pass, you can add in a farther destination such as Hiroshima. For example, going from Tokyo to Kyoto to Shinosaka to Hiroshima, and then on your return, stopping at Himeji before returning to Tokyo. With reserved seating, the total cost is 53,580 yen. The currently priced JR Pass offers a savings of 23,930 yen. And even at the new price of 50,000 yen, the JR Pass would still offer a savings of 3,580 yen. So there still are routes that are worth it when the prices increase. You just need to go far enough distances. If you're interested in this particular itinerary, we made a separate video showing the fun things you can do along the way. We'll link that below as well. And remember, it's not just about the price. It's also hugely convenient to have the JR Pass. You don't have to do as much research about how to get from place to place. You're pretty well covered. What if I'd rather not get the JR Pass? What can I do instead? If you'd rather not get the JR Pass, you can purchase individual Shinkansen train tickets through Kluke or the SmartX website. We will make detailed videos showing exactly how to buy tickets through both of these platforms. You could also fly if you're going a far distance. For example, on our next trip, we will be flying from Tokyo to Sapporo in Hokkaido. And then on the way back, we're gonna take the train so we can stop and sightsee along the way. There are also long distance buses as another option. You can purchase the JR Pass either while you're still at home or once you arrive in Japan. Before your trip to Japan, you can purchase the JR Pass from a travel agent, either in person or online. Our preferred method is purchasing online through Kluke. We use Kluke also to buy attraction tickets throughout Japan, such as tickets for Tokyo Disney or Universal Studios Japan. And we have videos on visiting there too. Currently, if you purchase your JR Pass through a travel agent, it's about 4,000 yen less expensive than if you were to purchase your JR Pass directly from JR. If you purchase online from an agent, you will be mailed what's called an exchange order. You will then have 90 days from date of purchase to take that exchange order to Japan and redeem it for your actual JR Pass. When you pick up your JR Pass, you'll be asked to set the activation date, which could either be that day or it could be within the next 30 days. The activation date is the first day that you will start using your JR Pass. Alternatively, you could purchase your JR Pass online directly through the official website, which is japanrailpass.net. This can be done up to a month in advance, and if you choose this option, you will have to set the activation date to within 30 days of purchase. The benefit of purchasing this way is that you will be able to reserve your train seats right away online. We recommend this option if you will be traveling during a really busy holiday season, and it's important to book your train seats in advance. If you're going not so crowded time, it's okay to wait until you're in Japan to book your seats. Currently, this option also costs 4,000 yen more than purchasing through a travel agent. But once prices increase, they'll be the same across the board, whether you buy through JR or through an agent. You can also purchase the JR Pass in Japan at a major JR station, such as Tokyo, Osaka, Shibuya, or Haneda Airport. We've done this option as well. Where to pick up your JR Pass in Japan? When you purchase your Japan Rail Pass, you don't actually have your pass until you get it from the ticketing office in Japan. Each member of your party needs to be present with their passport and proof of purchase. This will either be an exchange order or confirmation if you purchase your pass through the official website. Additionally, you must have the temporary visitor stamp in your passport. When you go through immigration, make sure you get that stamp. These days it's actually a sticker and not a stamp. Bring your exchange order or confirmation with you to the JR ticketing office also known as the Midori no Madoguchi, which means green window. You'll see this green logo. Now, if you see more than one office there, look for the one that says something similar to Service Travel Center. And perhaps the best place to get your JR Pass is when you arrive at the airport. There will be a ticketing office at the airport. However, depending on what time you arrive, it may not be open. What types of trains are included in the Japan Rail Pass? Shinkansens. These are the bullet trains. On a Shinkansen, you can go from Tokyo to Kyoto in a little over two hours, depending on which train you take. There are also express trains, limited express trains, and rapid trains. You will use these when Shinkansens are not available on your route. For example, if you want to go from Kyoto to Kanazawa, there is no Shinkansen, so you will need to take the Thunderbird Express 
They are building a Shinkansen on this route, and in the summer of 2024, it will be partially open from Kanazawa to Fukui. Do I need to pay for other types of transportation during my trip to Japan? Possibly. While you may be taking the Shinkansen from point A to point B, chances are once you arrive in your destination, you will need to use local transportation to either get to your accommodation or to an attraction. Sometimes these local trips will not be included with your JR Pass. But first, a tip on using loop trains. In Osaka, there is the Osaka Loop Train, and in Tokyo, they have the Yamanote Line. With these loop trains, they go around the city and stop at most major locations. So there's a good chance you can get to where you need to go with a loop train. And they're included with the JR Pass. If the local transport is not included in the JR Pass, then we recommend you get an IC card, which stands for Integrated Circuit Card. Unfortunately, there is a global shortage of the chips that make these cards, so you may not be able to get one. If that is the case, we recommend that you either buy individual tickets at the gates, or if you are arriving at Narita or Haneda, you can still purchase either a Welcome Suica card or a Pasmo card for visitors. The only downside to that is they're only valid for 28 days. Do I need to reserve a seat on a train? We often travel unreserved while using the JR Pass because it allows us a lot of flexibility. But here are some instances when we do recommend you make a reservation. If you are traveling during a Japanese holiday season, such as Golden Week, if you have oversized luggage, and if you're traveling with young children and you want to be sure you get to sit together. How do I reserve a seat on a train? The easiest way is by visiting the ticketing office and have the attendant do it for you. Reservation ticket machines are another option, but these can be confusing, especially for first time visitors. And it can be very busy at times. If you do choose this method, make sure you have your passport on hand because you will need to enter your passport number. And if you have any questions, there is usually an attendant nearby. You can find these machines near the Shinkansen gates and express train gates. Finally, you can also reserve seats on some websites such as eki.net, or if you purchase directly from the official website, you can make your reservations there. But how do you pick up your seat reservation tickets? The easiest way, again, is to go to the ticketing office. The other option is you can go to the reservation ticketing machine, the same place where you can make a seat reservation. Some trains are 100% reserved only, but how do you know if it's reserved only? It's hard to tell, but either a Shinkansen or an express train can be a reserved only train. The best way to know is to visit the ticketing office, tell them your itinerary, and they'll be able to tell you which trains are reserved only. And then you can book your reserved seats. What if I have a lot of luggage or large suitcases? First, please pack as light as possible. Stations can be extremely crowded and it can be very difficult to navigate. And sometimes it will be very hard to find an elevator. If this is the case, you'll have no choice but to carry your luggage up and down the stairs. No fun. On Shinkansen's, each ticketed passenger is allowed two pieces of luggage up to 30 kg each. And if you have oversized luggage, you may be required to have a seat reservation specific for oversized luggage. If you are traveling on any Shinkansen from Tokyo on south to Kyoto, Osaka, or all the way down to Kyushu, then the oversized baggage rule applies and you will need to reserve a dedicated seat. If you do not, you face a fine of 1,000 yen and the attendant will choose where to stow your luggage. Any luggage with a total dimension over 160 centimeters, length plus width plus depth is considered oversized and you will need to make a seat reservation. There are some exceptions to this rule. Anything larger than 250 centimeters, length plus width plus depth is not allowed on any Shinkansen, even with a reservation. If you are measuring in inches, most suitcases under 26 inches will not be oversized, but if you have any doubts, please measure it. We don't recommend you take anything larger than 24 inches as it can be very difficult and especially hard to put it in the overhead compartment. And it can be very dangerous if it fell. If you do have something really heavy, you can put it in your seat right in front of you, though it might take up all your legroom. Fortunately, the oversized rule doesn't apply to all the Shinkansens. So if you are going to the Hokuriku region or anything north of Tokyo, the oversized baggage rule currently does not apply. Please still don't take anything too large. And are there any other options? Yes. You can send your luggage via Yamato Transport, also known as Kuroneko. We use them all the time and it is a huge, huge stress reliever. It's especially great if you have oversized luggage as you can have it sent directly to your destination. You can also have it sent round trip. So when you arrive at the airport, you can have it sent from the airport directly to your accommodation and then back to the airport if you want. We have a whole episode dedicated to this. Link will be in the description below. Which apps should I install on my smartphone to help navigate in Japan? We recommend installing Japan Travel by Navitime on your phone. 
This app allows you to filter based upon trains that are included within the JR Pass. We also like using Google Maps as well, but beware, it will sometimes show you trains that are excluded from the JR Pass, such as the Nozomi. So pay close attention. If you're having trouble with the apps finding a train that fits your schedule, you can also ask a train attendant near the gates at the train station. We've often found that many of the trains are not included within either of the transportation apps. Sometimes we're standing on the platform waiting for the train, we look up at a sign and we see a train that's not listed on Navitime or Google Maps, but it's still headed to the station. Keeping your JR Pass safe. Lost JR Passes are not replaceable. Be sure to retrieve your JR Pass after feeding it into an automatic ticket gate. You put it in and make sure you pull it back out. We also designated one family member to be in charge of the whole family's passes. When we got up to the ticket gate, I would hand out everybody's passes, they would insert them, go through, then we'd find a place to stand out of everybody's way, gather them all back, and put them back in the same safe place again, so we always knew where they were. I would not have been happy if one of our kids had lost their pass and we'd had to pay to replace it. To recap, let's go over some vocabulary definitions. An exchange order is a paper confirmation you receive after purchasing a JR Pass online from a travel agent. You will take this exchange order with you when you go to Japan. A JR Pass is a special ticket that allows for unlimited rides on JR transportation. It looks like a train ticket and can be fed into the automatic ticket gates. Activation date. This is the date that you will start using your JR Pass. Day one. You could have it activate the day you pick up your JR Pass or for within the next 30 days. Validity of the JR Pass. Either seven, 14, or 21 consecutive days. Date of activation is day one. No matter what time you start using the pass or even if you don't start using it, Activation day counts as day one and days run consecutively. IC card, a rechargeable card. You can tap it at the automatic ticket gate to pay for a train or use it for a subway or on a local bus. Our family is traveling long term. We've already made a series of videos to help you plan your trip to Japan, including multiple videos explaining the JR Pass. Please subscribe for more travel tips. We're already planning our next trip to Hokkaido, Japan.